Hello children, today uh, let us study chapter number 5 of history, name of the chapter is Kingdoms, Kings and an Early Republic. Kingdoms means country which, uh, which are ruled by kings or queens and an early republic it marked the era when english colonies once and the young nation was established that is from 1782 1830 election day the day on which we used to cast our vote to choose or to elect our representative so it was the day like that Shankaran woke up to see his grandparents all ready to go and vote here Shankaran is the name of a person he woke up To see his grandparents who are already all ready to go to cast their vote. They wanted to be the first to reach the polling booth. So the grandparents they want what to go first in order to cast their vote to reach in the polling booth, the polling station where vote has to be cast there they want to reach at first why Shankaran wanted to know why are they so excited somewhat impatiently his grandfather explained we can choose our own rulers today so here grand father he explained that they are going to choose their leader or their rulers how some men became rulers let us see the process how some men they became as a leader or they used to rule the country or the state choosing leaders or rulers by voting is something that has become common during the last 50 years or so was to choose the leaders or rulers just by cut, uh, casting vote it is something which has become common from the last 50 years or so how did men become rulers in the past some of the rajas we read about in chapter 4 were probably chosen by the jana the people so how people they used to rule the country how they became the rulers in the past days when there was no voting system some of the rajas we read about them in chapter number four they are probably chosen by the jana jana means people the people jana means here the people it has written but around 3000 years ago we find some changes taking place in the ways in which rajas were chosen see 3000 years ago approximately 3000 years ago here we find some changes it took place here 
in the ways in which rajas were chosen during those days some men now became recognized as rajas by performing very big sacrifices at present days some men they become recognized people recognize them as rajas and they become raja by doing very big sacrifices the ashamedha or horse sacrifice was one such ritual ashamedha sacrifice or horse sacrifice in that type of sacrifice you see this in this ashamedha one horse is needed here you will learn how it happened so this ashwamedha or horse sacrifice was one that type of ritual a horse was let loose to wander uh, freely and it was guarded by the raja's man so in such ashwamedha sacrifice there a horse used to set free or let loose to go freely and it was behind that horse some person or subjects of king they used to guard it by that means they were the subjects of king rajas man if the horse wandered into the kingdoms of other rajas and they stopped it they had to fight so it was the rule if that horse wandered into the kingdoms of other king rajas means kings and if anybody happened to stop that they had to fight they had to fight with that means uh the king who have sent that horse with some some of his subjects with those subjects the place where that horse is or the kingdom where that horse is there if the king of that place happened to stop that horse there they had to fight with that very king if they allowed the horse to pass it mean that they accepted the that the raja who wanted to perform the sacrifice was stronger than them so without fighting without stopping the horse if that very raja or king allowed the horse to pass here it mean that they accepted that the raja who set free that horse or the raja who wanted to perform the sacrifice was stronger than them these rajas so yeah then invited to the sacrifice which was performed by specially trained priests who are rewarded with gifts so if that raja or rajas accepted that or let that horse go freely then these rajas who are invited to the sacrifice there sacrifices it used to do by trained priests and they were rewarded with gifts with many presentation 
The Raja who organized the sacrifice was recognized as being very powerful and all those who came brought gifts for him. So the Raja who have organized the sacrifice, the Shameda, sacrifice. Here he was introduced or recognized as very strong or very powerful king. And all those who came brought gifts for that very Raja. The Raja was a central figure of these rituals. He often had a special seat, a throne or a tiger skin. Raja here, he was a central figure for this. And there he often had a special seat for himself, a throne or a tiger skin. His charioteer who was his companion in the battlefield and witnessed his exploits, chanted tales of his glory. Here that means his charioteers. Person who that means drive his chariot and was his person or companion in the battlefield and witnessed his exploits. They used to chant it, tells of his glory. His relatives, especially his wives and sons, had to perform a variety of minor rituals. So, in the family members also. His relatives as well as his wife and sons, they also need to do, they also had to perform different types of uh, minor rituals here. The other Rajas were simply spectators. Spectator means a person who watches deer. So other Rajas, they just sit and they used to watch. They had to sit and watch the performance of the sacrifice. They just sit there and watch that sacrifice. Priests performed the rituals including the sprinkling of sacred water on the king. Which is, it is his duty that means yeah, this uh, priest duties are there to perform the rituals and these priests they used to sprinkling of sacred water they used to that means uh, throw sacred holy water on the king the ordinary people the wish or vaishya also brought gifts ordinary people they own that means they are such as Vish or Vaishya. Vaishya means it is a Hindu caste. People and they belong to merchants and farmers. They also used to brought gifts for Raja. However, some people such as those who are regarded as Shudras by the priests who are excluded from many rituals so this is another caste of hinduism we know that means brahman shudras chetriyas vaishyas these are the four castes of hindus in which you see in this uh, ritual we find however some people such as those who are regarded as shudras the shudras you see uh, by the priests were excluded from many rituals. They were not allowed by the priests in many rituals. Varnas. We have many books that were composed in North India, especially in the areas drained by the Ganga and the Yamuna during this period. 
several books that compose in our northern India, especially the areas which are drained by this Ganga and Yamuna rivers during that period. These books are often called later Vedic because they were composed after the Rig Veda about which you learned in chapter 4. And the book is composed here. They are always called as later Vedic. It is because of they are composed after the Rig Veda. And it was uh, that means we have learned in chapter 4 about this. These include the Shama Veda, Yajur Veda and Atharva Veda as well as other books. So contains Shama Veda, Yajur Veda and Atharva Veda. We know that we have in Hindu custom we have four Vedas. But you must know it. They are Rig Veda, Shama Veda, Yajur Veda and Atharva Veda. Among these, Rig Veda is the oldest Veda. So, which include the Shama Veda, Yajur Veda and Atharva Veda as well as other books. These were composed by priests and described how rituals were to be performed. This book were composed of uh, composed by priest priest that means they composed it and in that book it described how rituals were to be performed this uh, rituals how it should be performed it was mentioned here they also contained rules about society in that it was also mentioned that rules about our society there were several different groups in society at this time priests and warriors farmers herders traders crafts persons laborers fishing folk and first people so several different groups we find in the society at this time such as priests warriors then uh, farmers, herders, traders, etc. Some priests and warriors. Warriors means a brave or experienced soldier. A brave or experienced soldier is called warriors. Some priests and warriors were rich. As were some farmers and traders. Others including many herders, craftspersons, laborers, fishing folk, and hunters, and gatherers, we are poor. So, such type of people are included here. The priests divided people into four groups called Varnas. So, what we have here Varna so you see here the priest what they have done we find they have divided those people into four groups they are called Varnas according to them each Varna had a different set of functions so according to those priests each and every varna they have different set of fun functions their profession their work is different the first varna was that of the brahmin among the four varnas the first varna is brahmin Brahmins so are expected to study and teach the Vedas, perform sacrifices and receive gifts. So 
these are the function of brahmins they have to study and teach the vedas and they have the authenticity to perform sacrifices and they receive gifts then come to the second one second varna in the second place we are the rulers also known as kshatriya the rulers who rule the country so they also known as kshatriya kshatriyas they were expected to fight battles and protect people and their function is to fight in the battles and to protect people then third one is third we are the vish or the vaishyas they were expected to be farmers herders and traders and third one is the vaishya vaishyas were expected to be farmers or cattle rearer herders means and traders merchant trading like that okay to trade do business like that both the kshatriyas and vaishyas would perform sacrifices kshatriya and vaishya they are allowed to perform sacrifices last we had the shudras who had to serve the other three groups and could not perform any rituals and the fourth varna is the shudras and shudras they had to serve the other brahman other that means uh people or other varnas who are known as brahmins kshatriya and vaishyas they had to serve them and other three groups and could not perform any rituals they are not allowed to perform any rituals they have to serve they have of three groups often women who are also grouped with the shudras both women and shudras who are not allowed to study the vedas they often hear women they are, they are also group they are they were also treated with the shudras in which both women and shudras were not allowed to study the vedas rules made like this by the priest the priest also said that these groups were are decided on the basis of but for example if one's father and mother were brahmins one would automatically become a brahmin and so on please you see they also said what that these groups these different groups they were decided on the basis of their birth as example if one's father and mother they belongs to brahmin automatically become that means the son or daughter become brahmin and if a shudras okay that means uh he got a son or daughter that son and daughter also automatically become a shudra later they classified some people as untouchable afterward some people were treated as untouchable untouchable means who are not allowed to touch everything every places these include uh, these included some crafts persons hunters and gatherers as well as 
people who help perform burials and cremations. So these untouchable are here, the people you see. They belong to craft persons, hunters and gatherers. Apart from that, those who help to perform burials and cremations. Cremations means burning of dead bodies. They are known as untouchable. The priest said that contact with these groups was polluting. He said by the priest to contact with those people, untouchable people, it was polluting. Many people did not accept the system of Varna laid down by the Brahmins. So, in response, you see, many people they did not accept it. The system of these burners, which is laid down by the Brahmins. Some kings thought they were superior to the priests. Others felt that birth could not be a basis of for uh, deciding with which Varna people belong to. So, in the you see, some uh, kings they thought what they were even superior, famous than the priest. Other they themselves feel that, but it is not a matter. Okay, but it could not be on the basis for deciding which Varna people belong to. Besides, some people feel that there should be no differences amongst people based on occupation. Apart from that, some people, what they feel, they feel that there should not be differences among the people on the basis of occupation. Others feel that everybody should be able to perform rituals yet other others they feel what in ritual performing in, that means performing of ritual ceremony that means the yeah, everyone should get chance everyone should be allowed and others condemned condemned means declared unfit and others condemned the practice of untouchability. Yet other groups of uh, people are there who declared it is unfit to practice this untouchability in the society. Also, there were many areas in the subcontinent, such as the Northeast, where social and economic differences were not very sharp, and where the influence of the priest was limited. So, apart from those, there were many areas of our subcontinent. As example, Northeast, their social and economic differences were not very sharp. It is not clear, which is not yet. And where the influence of priest, it, it was limited. Janapadas. The Rajas who performed these big sacrifices were now recognized as being Rajas of Janapadas rather than Janap. Jana means the people or subject I already told you about. The Rajas or the kings who performed these big sacrifices. Big sacrifices, means as example, this Ashamedha sacrifice. They were now identified as being Rajas of Janapadas rather than Janas. The word Janapada literally means the land where the Janas set its foot, where people 
they set its foot and settled down and they where they lived some important janapadas are known as as sorry some important janapadas are shown on map 4 page 49 but you can see here some important janapadas okay are shown here on page number 4 you see um, uh, map 4 sorry on map 4 page number 49 here you can see some janapadas is mentioned archaeologists have excavated a number of settlements in these janapadas such as purana kila in delhi Hastinapur near Merat and Atranjikhera near Ita, the last two are in Uttar Pradesh. They found that people lived in huts and kept cattle as well as other animals. We, our archaeologists, they found that one. Okay, that means about the settlements of these Janapadas. In different parts of our India. They found that people lived in huts and kept cattle as well as other animals. And those people they found that they lived in huts and used to domesticate different cattle as well as other animals. They also grew a variety of crops rice, wheat, barley, pulses, sugarcane, shisham, and mustard. Archaeologists, they found that these people, they used to grow these different types of crops. They made, let us see in the next page, they made earthen pots. Some of these were green color, others were red. And those people, they used to make their pots with art or, or mud. Some of these were green color, others were red in color. One special type of pottery found at this site is known as painted gray wire. So, a special type of Pottery they found here at this site, which is known as painted gray wire. As is obvious from the name, these gray pots had painted designs, usually simple lines and geometric patterns. So I think you are clear here. So let's up to here. Thank you all.